There is not Israel. You want peace? You don't uh, play with me? What? What are you talking? What are you talking about? This is Israel. This is Palestine. Shut your mouth. There is not Israel. There is not Israel. There is Palestine. Excuse me. Hello. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut up. Palestine is free. Palestine is free. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about manners. The man, he walked up to the, a man, insulted him, and then was screaming his face for what? He didn't even ask him a question. He didn't ask him a question. He just assumed. And then he was being rude to other people. I don't Jesus is from Palestine. He's come for the Palestine. For you. You for Trump? No, I'm just in a chair. Why are you put this in a chair? I don't know. Yeah. Why are you put this? Why? Why? Tell him why. Tell him why. No, I'm not going to do that. Yes, tell him. Why are you put this in a chair? I'm going to sit down. Is that why? This is for you. No, 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 Palestine. Palestine. No Israel. Your book came from a man. Yes, Biden, 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 Biden. Christians got their book from God Himself that spoke to Adam. So Muhammad is his own false prophet. No, was prophesied in the Bible. Yes, he was, but not from where you think he was prophesied. He was prophesied by Jesus himself. They will become many false prophets Amen. in the end times, which is now. Muhammad, how did Muhammad die though? We know how he died. How did Jesus die? Muhammad was poisoned by a woman, a Jewish woman. Ten minutes. Who would have loved to have this flag around her neck. Her, her poor family was murdered by Muhammad and his raiders. There is no Israel. Israel exists because God wills it to exist. The only reason why Israel is back in the land now is because it was prophesied thousands of years ago. Israel will be called back to the land that it was promised. Now earlier on, I had a few guys talk to me about what miracle did Jesus give? I'll read it to you. This is from Matthew 12, from verse 83, 38. Then some of the scribes and the Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation craves a sign, and no sign will be given to them except the sign of Jonah the prophet. Many people misunderstand the point of the sign of jo uh, Jonah. People say because Jonah didn't die, but Jesus did die, that, the, that there's no correlation. But from your Quran, you don't believe Jesus died anyway. You believe that a man went in Jesus' place, so you just contradict yourself anyway. So I will read from Jonah itself. Jonah's prayer to the Lord. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord 
his God from the stomach of the fish. And he said, I called out my distress to the Lord, and he answered me. I called for help from the depth of Sheol. Where did Jesus go when he died? He first went to Sheol. Sheol is not hell. That is a mistranslation. Sheol, Sheol is also Hades. Sheol is the Jewish, uh, Jewish word that means a place where, Lord will, where the Lord will be. And Hades is not a person like the Greek mythology. Hades is a place. So Jonah was in the depth of the fish, which went down to the depths of the earth, symbolizing Sheol. He didn't die. That is part of the miracle. But the miracle itself is that Jonah came back from the depths of Sheol, which was basically mirroring and shadowing the resurrection of Jesus. That's why he said, I will give you the sign of Jonah. One second. You heard my voice, for you threw me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the currents flow around me. All your breakers and waves passed over me. So I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Nevertheless, I will look again towards your holy temple. Water encompassed me to the point of death. So, he said, to the point of death, he was nearly dead, but the Lord preserved him not to die. It's just like when Jesus went into the grave. His body died, but his spirit went to Sheol. The, de the deep followed around me, seaweed was wrapped around my head. I descended to the base of the mountains. The earth with its bars was around me forever. But you have brought up my life from the pit. The Lord gave Jonah his life back. Jonah disobeyed God. He did not go where God wanted him to go. So, he disciplined him to awesome. make way awesome. for the sign on, awesome. and to shadow of what Jesus was going to do. If you want to ask questions, you ask him. Yeah, he said stop. Because me, I want to question fast. I need, second. To, I need to go this. So I Whilst I was faint, fainting away, I remember the Lord and you. my Just power came to you. Because me, I need to ask he questions. Came to your up. holy temple. Hello? Those who are followers Good of the worthless idols abandon their faithfulness, but I will sacrifice to you with a voice of thanksgiving that which I have vowed I will pay. Salvation is from the Lord. Then the Lord commanded to the fish and it vomited Jonah up on the dry land. How does it say King Jesus and King his son? This is Speaker's Caller. It's Cam or Sipperware. How is King John? And this is King Jesus. Are you saying how are they the same? Yeah, I swear. It's just your So, King Charles, even though he isn't my king, he lives, he commands over the land where I live. He's not my king. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His kingdom is not on this earth. The person who collectively commands this earth is Satan. This is his domain. Jesus said whilst he was here, this is not my kingdom. Charles Darwin is the truth and the life. Yes. Just one law. Because there is loads of false laws. There's loads of false gods. Loads of false gods and loads of false gods.
that Jesus is the one true Lord, the one true King, and the one true God. That is what it means. So let me go back to. Uh, Yes, this world that we have now, this is not his kingdom. Uh, the Roman, um, what was the Roman uh, uh, sign? Sign. How is that not his kingdom? I mean, in accordance to you. Because Jesus is, is the king of heaven. So who is the king of heaven? Satan. This world is fallen. In the garden, Jesus was the king. And then when Adam and Eve was cast down and out of the garden, and sin entered the world, the world was corrupt. This world needs to be cleansed. So when Jesus comes back for the, as the conquering king, when he first came, to the, came through Mary, when he was born, he came as a suffering servant. The only, and you say, well, why didn't he say that he was God? He came to show the way to the Father. He submitted to the Father, even though he could have used his powers. That's why when Jesus went into the desert 40 days and 40 nights, the devil tried to tempt him. He said, use your power. You have the power to turn this stone into bread. But he said, no, you shall depend on the Lord your God. He tried to tempt him to use his power. He took him to the top of a high building and said, But did you see how that didn't answer any other question? Like, I asked, whose kingdom is it? And then he tried to explain me the story of what happened on the earth between the Father and the Coming back to that, so the king of this earth is Satan. Yes. So, so King Charles, he is the king of the United Kingdom. Uh, Putin, he's the king, the prime minister, or whatever he is, the president of Ukraine, uh, Russia. Sorry, not Ukraine, Russia. Um, and then you've got like uh, Mohammed bin Salman, he's the leader of his country. And Satan is the leader of all of them. But wouldn't you want your Lord to be the leader of the, or the creator of this world, or the king of this world? Wouldn't you want your Lord to be the king of that? So, at the end, when he comes back, he came first as a suffering servant. When he comes back for the second time, which is the final time, he will come as a conquering king, how the Jews wanted him to come the first time. They, were, they weren't ready for him. Just like the Jews won't be ready for him again. So, he's going to come as the conquering king. But why does he have to get the conquering attributes later on? Like, if you're the king, right, if you're the Lord, if you're the God, then you'll have that all the time anyways. Yes. That's why he came as a suffering servant. When, um, he came as a suffering servant to take the punishment for sin. And that's, and that's how his body died. He took the punishment for sin. So... Certain things have to happen for him to come back. Do you feel like, do you feel like at a certain level, there's some confusion as to his position as the Lord or as someone that came to the earth? Or is there, is there a confusion in your mind between this, right? No, no. It's, uh, it's like the Old Testament when it prophes when it prophesies about Jesus, uh, it says that he will come twice and he will have <coughs> two separate missions to do if you will that's why when he was on the cross and he said he was finished his first coming was finished his job the first time was wasn't to come as the king it was to come to save those who wanted to be saved but so, he's, he's the lord right according to yourself am i correct yes how does how does he determine how he's going to come in his position to come and i'll tell you i'll explain this to you why it's because as a Muslim, you know this, we believe in Jesus as well, right? In a Jesus, yeah. In, in Jesus as a prophet, just like Muhammad is a prophet, right? And to us, he's a prophet because he's a messenger to come and reveal God's um, word, correct? But you're giving him God-like attributes and saying he chose to come as a messenger, then he chose to be the God and go to them, and now he's going to choose to come back, right? Do you see how that's a bit... It, it, it sort of confuses his position of who he actually is. 
Like for us, he was a messenger. He came, revealed his message, and he was more. That's because the Quran, even though it copied a lot of what was existing at the time, it copied a lot from the Tanakh, from the Old Testament, which is part of the Tanakh and the law, and then it copied what scriptures was about at the time from the Christians. It's not necessarily copied, I just want to correct you. They didn't put in the prophecies of the Old Testament. That's why they didn't... I want to correct one thing. They didn't necessarily copy it. What it is, is if there's a message by God to humanity, it needs to be one anyway. So if there's been a message sent to the Christians and then sent to the Muslims and then sent to the Jews, that in its original sense was the same anyway. That's what we believe. Now the difference lies here is where in the Quran has never been changed, right? So as we have it today is how as it's always been memorized and has always been decided. This is not the case with the Bible and the Quran. That's what we to believe. But if you watch Prove it to me. Have you heard of Dr. J. Smith? Dr. J. Smith. Now you, you tell me, in, 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 in your like you. So from the research that I've done, uh, the Quran, in its earlier stages, they, it was just the, um, the letters. They didn't have the dots and the vowels, the book or below the letters. It was just the letters. And then later on, they added the dots and the vowels because they couldn't make any sense of it. Because from further research, if you turn, if you just get that text without the dots and the vowels, you turn, you try to, because um, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Arabic, they're all Semitic languages, they're all quite similar, especially Arabic and Aramaic. Once you put that back into what it was, a rich, um, before Muslims became a nation, in the area where they were, Aramaic was a very dominant language. Obviously, in, in, in Israel, it was Hebrew, and then... <clears throat> Just coming back to the relevant how has it changed? Yes. So, so oh, give me the references. Like, I'll give you an example. I went to a museum today, right? I went to the British Museum earlier today. Um, actually, I went there yesterday. I went to another Elizabeth and something. Sorry, it was v and uh, Albert and something. I forget which one. I was walking past that and I went in. And in that museum, I saw a Quran from 700 AD. Um, that was taken from Cairo and I read it right I read it exactly how it is and it's it's a verse that I already know so I was able to read it the way it was and the Prophet passed away in 623 and that's in your museum over here so I can go and read the Quran and see that 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 verse is exactly the same so I'm coming back to your point how was it changed how has any verse any ayah if you go throughout verse, the world you, there are at least 30 different Arabic Qurans, people have come down with Atun Tash and Dr. J. Smith, they came down with 30 different Arabic Qurans. There was the, the Wash and the, what's the, what's the uh, Cairo edition called? It's the Hafs, thank you very much. The Hafs and the, and the Wash, over 4,000 differences, not just words. Thank you for being anti-Semitic. I love Israel, thank you. Don't worry about it. Um, so, Dr. J. Smith and his team, they have looked through, just, they looked through loads, but specifically the Wash and the Hafs, because they're the, they're the main Qurans that are used by Muslims around the world. At least 4,000 differences. There's small differences, and then there's differences that add up to the, it changes the doctrine. Hang on. Look, I've been to 30 countries, and each of these countries, I, I take an effort to go to the mosque, any mosque, right? and read the Quran and have a chat. I would urge you also, if you ever have a chance, to find any Quran anywhere and find a difference from it anywhere. That's it doesn't exist. She went to, she went to Morocco, she went to uh, Turkey, she went to all, for, all these places. She went to the bookshop, she found, I think, like five or six at the time, and then she's like, why do these have different names? She opened them, she went to popular verses, and some of them were different. So then she... It wouldn't be different. Look, I, I'm telling you as a Muslim, and this is for you to check yourself as well. I have never ever read a Quran separate from another Quran. It doesn't exist. And we, as, a, as an overall, speak to any Muslim and ask them and you'll get the answer. But, but, there is one thing that you might argue on and that's this. We have something called the Tafsir, which is, the, uh, what is this verse trying to actually say, right? And some Qurans, on the side, they'll put that, the verse, and then they'll put, the, let's say, the Turkish or the, or the um, Egyptian 
understanding of that, that verse. Now there are certain words that some scholars, when they converted it, the words are a bit different, but that doesn't mean the Arabic letters were different. So the Arabic letters in all the Qurans are the same. But it would just be a different wording. The Arabic, the, the, the Qurans that they have, it's purely Arabic. I mean, there's no translation to English. It's just Arabic against Arabic. Um, if you'd like to actually look at the video on YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. But I know this because we read it every day, right? So, like, it would be easy for me to like test in, this. In, in Islam, they tell you not to question. Question is is looked down upon. It's, it's around the question. Islam. Yes, to question Islam. No, it's actually encouraged. It's actually one of our verses that encourages the question, find your Lord. That's what it says to you. Speak and try to discover your Lord. And as a Muslim, born in a Muslim family, it was the number one thing that... Because there's, there's certain things, right? You're not allowed to eat pork, for example. You're not allowed to drink alcohol. You're not allowed to do drugs. And so a young Muslim would go up to his father and say, all right, blah, 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 what is this? When I asked my father, I said, why can't I drink, right? Or why can't I smoke weed or do this? He didn't say, this is just... This is your book, you can't do it. That's not That's not how it's taught down to us. My dad said, for example, drugs. They alter the state of consciousness of your mind. So this is not recommended. And this is an explained verse from the Quran anyway. They alter the state of your consciousness of your mind. So it's not specifically weed. It might be a new drug that's invented tomorrow. But the whole point is the fact that the alter the state of the consciousness of your mind. And that's what the Quran says, refrain from them. Does that make sense? It's not, it's not, it's not, not encouraged. We're all encouraged to discover it. What's your, has, has your family been in England for a long time? I, I'm not from the UK. I just came here for two days. Where is your family from? We're originally Turkish, but I'm from Melbourne, Australia. I live in Melbourne. There, in polemics, there's an idea that there's a Western Islam and an Eastern Islam. That's not true. And there is an ex-Muslim that we know, uh, Doc, Dr. Um, Al Fadi, he's an ex-Muslim, he was born in Saudi Arabia, he was 45 minutes to an hour away from Mecca. And he says, because he now lives in America, because he can't go back to his home country because he'd be killed, I mean an apostate. So he now lives in America, I can't remember which state, but it's in America. It's the, by the way, that's not true, 